So we've been talking about parallelization quite a bit, and today I'd like to talk about creating algorithms that are parallel. So we're going to start with a fairly simple algorithm to find the next prime number after a given number. For instance, you might go like 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so forth. Um, this functionality is actually used quite a bit in computer science, say if you're doing hash tables with quadratic uh, walks. So we're going to start off with naive code to find the next prime number. Um, I'm going to show you the source code in just a minute. And this will give you an idea of sort of how you do it uh, the hard way. So here's the high level code. Uh, we're going to start at 11. We're going to get find the next 10 prime numbers. Um, it calls this method called naive next prime. So if we run this, we get the next um, 10 prime numbers. Okay. So that relies on this function called next prime, or naive next prime in this case. Let's do some sanity checking. We want to make sure it's an odd number because we know even numbers can't possibly be prime. Um, we, we increment to the next one. And we use this is prime number, and we find if this number is prime, excuse me, if this number is not prime, we go to, we skip two ahead. Okay. And is prime is just done by counting from two to the number divided by two because you don't need to go past half. Um, and if mod is zero, we know it's uh, not a prime number because it's evenly divisible. Okay, and that's all there is to it. There is a way to improve this naive algorithm, um, and that's with an approach called the sieve of eratosthenes. And with the sieve of eratosthenes, what we do is we pre-calculate a whole bunch of um, prime numbers. We actually don't really pre-calculate them. What we do is we fill in an array with the potential uh, prime numbers. So everything is pre-calculated, then once it, once it comes time to find the next prime number, we just sort of walk down a Boolean array. Um, so let's take a look at the source code now. So as I said, the next prime method, or function since it's C++, um, is really simple. All we do is we, we go to the starting number, we add one of course, and we walk through this sieve array that's already been pre-calculated. Once we find one of these array elements that's open or false, we just return the index because that is the next prime number. So how do we calculate the sieve? Well, here's how we pre-calculate the sieve. First, we set everything to false. Um, the first two are going to be true because we, we don't we don't want zero and one. Okay, and we actually only need to walk up to the square root. Um, that's an optimization that you can always count on. So here we're gonna we're gonna loop, and then um, if the sieve has not been already calculated, what we do is we take the factor. So let's say we're at three, then we're going to go factors of three, three, six, nine, and so forth, and and set all those. So really what we're doing is just setting anything that's a factor of, of this base number. J is the factor and I is the base number. And that's how it works. Okay, so let's go ahead and change our function. First we have to pre-calculate the sieve. And then all we have to do is instead of saying naive next prime, we just say next prime. Compile that should give us the same results, okay? So there you go. So you're probably wondering where the parallelization comes in. Um, how is this a parallel algorithm? It looks like the old uh, sieve of Eratosthenes that I teach in computer science too. Well, let me show you. So to parallelize the pre-calculation, all we need is some OpenMP. And we're done. That's all it takes, and you get about a fourfold increase in the pre-calculate function. So in conclusion, with some effort you can convert almost any algorithm from normal and sequential to parallel. In almost every case, the payoff is worth it, and it can dramatically improve the performance of your application.